if I want to solve um, this equation, a lot of times what we do is we need it. The most important thing is we want to look at, see if we can set this as a pair of linear factors. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and say, um, and what I mean by linear factors is a, bin you know, a binomial multiplied by a binomial. Okay, and that's going to equal zero. Because if you know that one of these equals zero, then what you'll be able to do is, you know, set each one of them equal to, uh, uh, you'll be able to set them both equal to zero and solve. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can factor this. And a lot of times, you know, we use um, the little box method. And you can say, you know, any two num what two numbers multiply to give you eight, but then add to give you six. And there's really not to... There's not any numbers. You have two, four, eight, and one. None of those numbers when multiplied give me six. So therefore, this is non-factorable. So there's two ways we can solve from here, um, algebraically. One way we can look at the quadratic formula, and the other way is by completing the square. So when we're completing the square, again, our purpose that we're going to want to try to get is a, a binomial square. So, and the way that we do that is um, by this little step called b over two squared, all right? To know what b is, you have to know what a quadratic equation looks like, all right? So your coefficient of your x squared is going to be a, which in this case is 1. Your coefficient of your x value is, um, is b, in this case is 6. And your c is your constant, in this case it's 8. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is you want to make sure that your, your a, there is nothing in a except for 1. You cannot have a negative 2, a 4, a 4 fifths. You've got to make sure you factor out everything so you only have a 1 as your coefficient. In this problem, I'm good. So then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to separate our x's with our constant. And the way that we're going to separate it is I'm just going to draw some parentheses. All right. So therefore, nothing mathematical have I done so far. All I've done is I've separated my, um, my x values with my constant. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, uh, a perfect square. And remember, a perfect square would be something like x plus 2 squared, where it gives you x squared plus 4x plus 4. That's a perfect square. We like these. So I need to create one. Well, the way to create one is to do b over 2 squared. So b is 6. 6 over 6. Oh, let's do one for you. 6 divided by 2 squared equals 9. So I'm going to add 9. Now, if you're going to add a 9 on the left side of the equation, you have to make sure that you subtract a 9 as well. And the reason why that's so important to subtract a 9 is then the, the equation wouldn't be balanced anymore, right? If I say 5 is equal to 2 times 10, right, and then I say 5 minus 1 is equal to 2 times 10, well, that's incorrect. That, these don't equal each other. But if I say 5 minus 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 times 10, well, that's correct. All right? So whenever you're adding something inside those parentheses, you've got to make sure you add it outside the parentheses as well. So here, I look at it, and I see how is, where is my perfect square. Well, this is going to be my b over 2, which would be 3. So it's x plus 3 squared. Um, and then 8 minus 9 minus 1 equals 0. Now from here, I can now solve using my um, solve to get rid of my uh, square root. Or I'm sorry, solve to get rid of my square because I'm going to have to use an inverse operation on the square. So I'm going to want to make sure I get everything away from that side. So I add a 1 to both sides. And now I have x plus 2 squared equals 1. So now that you can see this, the only thing I have on here is x plus 2 squared. And the reason why that's so important is to undo my squaring, I have to take the square root. All right, so now a square and a square root cancel out, and I'm just left with x plus 2 equals plus or minus 1. The square root of 1 is 1, but we don't know if it's negative 1 times negative 1 gave us 1, or it was 1 times 1 gave us 1. So we have to take the square root. Then I just get rid of my 2, and I'm left with x is equal to plus or minus 1 minus 2. Or really you could say x is equal to a negative 1 or negative 3. So that is how um, you solve using completing the square.